Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights at Biotech and Money 2017 in London. You must have heard of Lab on a Chip, Lab on a Card. There's a UK-based company that's pioneering this space with rapid DNA analyzers that can tell you which infection you have in a matter of minutes. Today on the show I have Elaine Warburton, CEO and co-founder of Quantum DX Group. Hello. Welcome Elaine. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. So you have a DNA analyzer on a credit card size chip. That's right. That can yes. tell you in minutes what sort of infection you have. That's correct, yes. So what we've done is we've taken an entire molecular laboratory with scientists and machines and the entire molecular process and then actually put it into a credit card size cassette where we're able to analyze DNA, infectious disease DNA or genotyping in minutes at the patient's side. So the sample goes into there and then we have a DNA extraction element um, in this particular region. And then interestingly on this side, is uh, PCR, so not only do we do endpoint PCR, but we also do uh, qPCR. Then finally, in this little area here, we have a microarray, where we're able to look at uh, 256 different features of a particular infectious agent. It also has connectivity, so we can actually beam the pathogen data up into a cloud, so we can look at real-time analysis of emerging drug resistance, which is a great problem for the WHO and for humanity, but also look at uh, novel pathogens and, uh, and other infectious agents as well. Let's take a step back. It sounds like you have a lot of applications with your technology. So I understand that you're in many, many different therapy areas, different areas of the industry, different sectors. So how did you prioritize these different areas? Yes. Well, my passion and my co-founder, Jonathan O'Halloran, who's the inventor of this technology, well, passion is in infectious diseases that have a global humanitarian burden, such as tuberculosis, HPV. And so we have actually developed our QPOP technology um, out for a low resource setting. So if you think about it, if you can actually develop a technology that can withstand heat, altitude, can be used by an unskilled worker, it's a bit like consumer diagnostics. So not only are you um, looking at humanitarian global problems and addressing those and helping the WHO with some of the concerns, but you have the potential to actually go into the consumer market where investors like to think there could be some very high value investments that could be made. Of course, infectious diseases affect everybody in the world but it affects more people in less prioritized areas. Um, That's right, because you need to diagnose disease early, and there are 4.2 billion people out in the world who don't have access to molecular diagnostics. So for example, HPV is one of our blockbuster uh, diagnostics. This HPV in Africa, there's 100 million women a year that have HPV infection. There are a number of strains, and in fact all of us have been uh, infected by HPV, at some stage, but our bodies can actually attack it and get rid of it. But there are 13 oncology strains that could cause cervical cancer, could cause genital cancer, could cause oropharyngeal cancer. So our aim is that we do a rapid HPV test to see if a lady has a, an oncology strain, and there's a new treatment there where you can ablate uh, a lady, laser uh, the cervix, and cure her. Not only that, but in the UK, Europe and the Western world, pap smears are going to be replaced by HPV serotyping. So imagine us ladies, we're going for our smear test, we don't like it, but imagine being told that you may have an oncology type of strain for HPV there and then, actually, when you actually have your uh, test. Sounds like a great opportunity and a big market as well. That's correct, yes. It's a 10 billion um, diagnostic market for that HPV alone. Speaking of the commercial application of this technology, I mean, I see two routes, personally, of how you could commercialize the technology. You could be selling it yourself directly to consumers or to clinicians. The second way, the second way may be companion diagnostic, as a companion diagnostic, and partnering with Big Pharma, for example. There aren't many of them left uh, who are in infectious diseases, but a few still in cancer oncology, some infectious diseases. So, are you thinking of doing both? Is that your plan? That is our plan. We have a partnering plan because we have a platform. Our QPOC is a platform. It's a rapid DNA analyzer. We can't do it all ourselves. So we'd much rather partner with life science companies, pharma companies, other companies that have very interesting uh, biological content that they would like to put on a point of care diagnostic platform. 
So for example, uh, companion diagnostics, how good would it be for a consultant or a clinician to be able to do a little pinprick of blood or a swab to see whether a patient can tolerate a particular drug before they prescribe the drug so there's no adverse drug reactions. We have an interesting genotyping assay, our warfarin genotyping assay. So warfarin's been around for decades, it's a rat poison and that's how we use it. But there are three little genetic mutations that if a patient has it, they really must go on to the new direct acting oral anticoagulants. If they have two, one or, other, or none, then you just vary the dose of warfarin. Unfortunately, the DOACs have come in and cost the NHS 100 billion last year in additional drugs budget, and that's unsustainable. So if you just do a little, little swab, a little test before you prescribe, we can then stratify patients into the most appropriate therapy. Save money, patients do as well, and drug companies get, uh, get their money, and everyone is happy. It sounds like you've tackled the accessibility problem with your cartridge. What about the affordability problem? How much will it cost for patients? Yes. Well, again, the beauty about our product is we've developed to a low resource setting. In fact, we actually met up uh, two years ago with Mr. Bill Gates himself, because he took a huge interest in us. And he basically looked at our technology and said, guys, love it, but it's way too expensive. You get the cogs down to around four, one or two dollars, and then I might be interested in you. And that's exactly what we've done over the last couple of years. So we've made it affordable. Um, I used to run hospitals and the one thing you see that actually there's uh, diagnostics can be quite expensive at time but there's money to be made if we, if we have volume markets and allow diagnostics to go out to the people, it's a brand new market as well as putting it into laboratories. So our te diagnostic technology is highly affordable. Pathology managers can buy it within their own pathology budgets, they don't have to go up to the board and, and ask for £100,000 worth of kit. It's only going to cost uh, about two thousand pounds. So is Mr. Bill Gates still interested? Oh yes, we're doing <laughs> we're doing a project with him right now on TB diagnostics, and uh, this particular trial that we're running is looking at uh, sensitivity. And already our technology appears to be better than the best in breed currently on the market. So. In a couple of months' time, we hope to be uh, uh, getting the results from that and publishing those results to show that this technology is truly amazing technology. Great. Uh, one last question. So the European regulations for medical devices and in vitro diagnostics are changing. Does that affect you in any way? And because you have a lot of programs too, yes. what does that mean for you? Well, it's going to be more money. Um, we're in the process at the moment of ISO 13485 accrediting our own laboratories, and hopefully that's going to happen quite quickly, and then CE marking late next year for our first, uh, first product. Now, it's going to be much more onerous. We know that we're going to have to run more clinical trials. Um, it's, at the moment, we're not sure just how big those trials have got to be and whether or not we actually just go straight to FDA. I think a lot of uh, um, medical device companies are thinking, well, let's just bypass the CE marking and go to FDA. Um, but we're also running WHO pre-qualification trials for the LMIC work as well. So we're wondering whether or not that data, where these are very large trials, in-country trials, will actually go towards data um, to go towards the CE IVD mark uh, in the future. But being a young company as well, we have put in our uh, QMS systems and everything else so that we hopefully are able to um, embrace the, the new rules and regulations. So we're not an established company, we're actually using the new rules from the get-go and that could hopefully be to our advantage. And hopefully it will reduce a lot of noise in the market. So as a company that has robust data and, and good technology, you'll stand out. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> well great, thank you so much for your time Elaine. It sounds like you're doing a great job and addressing a huge problem, especially in the areas, um, a third, third country, third, third world countries, um, less developed areas. So kudos to you. Thank you very much Summer. Really appreciate coming onto your show. Thank you. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.